Hello, YouTube. Welcome to mid-season six. We're halfway through. I think we're five weeks deep. The mid-season patch happened last week where we saw some nerfs to Orisa, nerfs to Baptiste, buffs to Zarya, and all that stuff. And on your screen here is my early season six tier list I made four weeks ago on the main channel. Now, what I'm going to do for the mid-season six is make an adjustment from the previous tier list. Uh, some people requested me that I start fresh again, but I I think I prefer looking at how I estimated the meta and the and the ladder uh, tier list to be last and then just slightly move things up and down. If you just want to see the list, you can skip to the end or just follow along as we go. In S tier, Orisa got nerfed in the mid-season patch. I had her at S earlier. I think this was accurate, all things considered. So uh, do I think she was nerfed enough that where she is no longer S tier? No. Are her other matchups a little bit better, like Zarya and everything? In terms of Orisa versus Zarya, there's it's like Zarya is definitely a little bit better. She'll be higher energy, a little bit easier. She bubbles the right target, and you get 45 energy instead of 40 because Zarya got buffed this patch, and Zarya can beam down and DPS down the Orisa if she's not careful. But it doesn't mean you 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 can play around it like as long as you're a smart and a smart Orisa, of course. Like don't just sit there and spin while she's beaming you down or else it's not really gonna do much unless you're trying to get out of line of sight and eat an ability. But all things considered, I think Orisa didn't really move, so I'm gonna leave her here. Baptiste. Baptiste got tweaked as well where the regen burst got nerfed from 50 to 40 and that means the double healing when they're less than half got cut in half as well from 100 to 80 and the healing over time Got nerfed a little bit as well. Do I think that changed Baptiste? No, I still think Bap is one of the... I think he's a really, really overtuned support hero. And that's coming from me. And I play a lot of Baptiste, mostly Bap. So I'm going to keep him on S tier. I think he does too much in the ranked play. Uh, a lot of DPS. Lamp is still good. He can still pocket Orisa. He can play with Orisa. He can play with Ram. He can play with Zarya. He can play with Queen. He can play with Ryan. You can just dish out so much besides that raw regen burst healing. That was like the easy part of his kit. So I think I still think he's really popular in rank two. So there we have it. Now, Alari, I really think she was an S tier hero before they nerfed her before the season began. And that actually did affect her quite a bit. Um, I think early on in the beta, she did so much, but then when they nerfed the pylon, I meant her ultimate got uh, nerfed in terms of its uh, overall uptime. And then the ultimate itself is actually really hard to hit. With all these shields and things that can block it, I actually don't think Alari is S tier anymore after playing it a bunch. I'm pretty. I still think she's a strong solo queue hero, but I don't even think she's A plus anymore. I think she's like A now. So I'm gonna knock her down here, which is still a serviceable hero. So we're gonna put that there. Diva, I still think is a very versatile tank. We still saw a lot of Diva today as I played in the mid season patch. I think I'm gonna keep her an A plus. Sigma as well. I think Sig is fantastic for poke. Sig was the al the alternative poke choice if you don't want to run Orisa on some maps. And uh, we saw a lot of Sig on the old patch with the Alari patch on Overwatch League when they played it on like Numbani, played it on Gibraltar, they played it on Midtown. Um, I think Sig is still pretty good. He was like really good on the maps he's really good at and like still strong on some other maps. I'm gonna keep Sig at A+. Hanzo's an interesting one. Do I still think Hanzo's an A plus hero? I think so. Now uh, before we get to Zarya, I think Zarya is like a great tank. I'll move her up as we get along and f go along the uh, the tiers. Hanzo obviously works even better in the Zarya meta with the grab dragon combo. So I think it's safe to keep him up here. Um, still really good. Storm Arrow can be super annoying. He's got good DPS uptime to pressure down enemy Orisas if they choose to play it. I'm going to keep them here. In top 100, I'm also going to keep Sojourn here. Uh, Sojourn's still a great hero at this level. Same with Soldier. Same with Torb. Um, Tracer's an interesting one. I, I've seen all these DPSs every single day. I've been playing this game, this patch, and the previous patch quite a bit. I've actually seen a lot less tracers on na simply because when Arissa was running rampant it was all just torbs and soldiers and like tracer would have a hard time converting any kill on her own i think tracer is still great when you run it with winston and if they don't have like anything that's too tanky if they have some vulnerable supports you go for it but i actually think tracer is like knocked down a tier i don't think he's one of the a plus supports i still think if you're like a great tracer you can still like you know do your own thing and apply pressure in your own way but i'm going to Put her down to tier simply because yeah it's soldier heal pad hard to do your job torbjorn turrets everywhere goo everywhere hanzo exists this hero is impossible to kill you got to go through the bap lamp we're gonna put tracer down to peg now believe it or not finally tracer was kind of s tier for like five and a half seasons anna i think anna's still good a plus we're gonna keep her here i think bap is a little bit better in terms of uh playing it with orissa sig but like anna's still great so I mean, you can argue that she also belongs in S tier, but I'm going to put it here. Kiriko. I actually like Kiriko more than Ana this patch, to be honest with you. 
Personally, I find it a little hard to play Ana against Arisa comps. A little annoying against D.Va, not the worst. And then when you play against Sigs, you just play Bapsen or Kiri for poke. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it here. But Kiriko, I like her. I like it a little bit better. I'm going to argue that Kiriko is actually like insanely good again, to be honest with you. I started picking her up a lot more. I see her almost in every other game. Ana will always be played no matter what, simply because she's a popular hero. But I think Kiriko outperforms her a little bit more at this point because... um. The Kitsune Rush, you need like a big, because there's so much extra healing and things to go through, you need like a big team fight win. Nano Boost is great, but it's still dependent on that one person using it. Kiriko's ult is such a team wide, like team strength kind of uh, ultimate right now. And it's just pairs so well with a lot of the other tanks right now. So we're going to put that here. Lucio is the last one on the A plus tier. Do people really run that much brawl right now? I mean, some people are running the uh, the Lucio variant with Orisa, where you run like Bap Lucio or even Kiriko Lucio with thing. But I think Lucio is still good with the Queen. I've been, for some reason, I'm still seeing a lot of Queen. Still see a lot with, uh, with the other stuff. I still think Lucio is pretty strong. I'm never upset when Lucio is in the game because he got nerfed. Or sorry, he got buffed in the beginning of season six. He saw a lot more play time. I'm going to put him here. Okay, Doomfist. I saw a lot of Doomfists in early season six. I actually saw a lot of Dooms today. I think one of them kind of dominated us, but I don't know if Doom is still A in the strong tier, but he's definitely, like a lot of times in the Dooms running the game, you can play Orisa and then the Doom has to just ignore it and do everything in the back line. But even an answer for Doom, he can be checked. But if you have no answer for him, he can absolutely run the game. It's hard to say. It really just depends. If you're like a Doom one trick and you just know all the tech, I think you're fine on him no matter what. But if you're like trying to pick him simply because he's meta, I don't know. You kind of need the hours to make him work. So I definitely saw more Dooms than Ramatras and Winston. So how about we'll keep Doom. I think I saw Doom like five times today. I saw one Ram and I honestly saw like two Winstons in the past like week. So I'm going to bump these two tanks down. And keep Doom at A. I think A. I think Doom. I think Arissa, Diva, Sig, Doom is very popular. And now let's get to Zarya because I bumped these two down. Zarya with the uh, buff this season. I think people are just kind of feeling her out. I actually still think Arissa is like a stronger overall comp to play. And Zarya is still a little bit map dependent, but Zarya is really good simply because the new bubble gives her 45 energy instead of 40 when used on a teammate. It lasts longer. It's bigger. It pairs really, really well with Reaper, Bastion, or Genji right now. And um, I think when the patch hit last week, I kept seeing Reaper in like the first few days. But Reaper is so boring that a lot of people just won't play him. But I actually think like playing Reaper Zarya is very good. But I'm going to bump uh, Zarya up one. But I still think Orisa is like the solo queue ranked hero to play on. So we're going to do that. Now let's go on to Ash. Uh, if you guys saw the Ash buffs from mid season, she reloads from her reload per bullet went from point, 0 0.25 seconds to 0 0.2 seconds. Now on paper, that's like zero, like 0 0.05 seconds, but like relative change is like what? 25% faster per bullet. It goes up real quick. We can put up the short. I did a little observation where we showed the difference between before and after, and then when you get a kill, or an elimination, or an assist, you get the fast reload. You can go full ammo so fast on Ash. I think Ash is one of the uh, better DPSs right now as well. I think Ash gets a nod up. I think you, can, you can't go wrong with any of these five DPSs right now. These are probably the strongest four. Bastion, I think Bastion is still a pretty strong hero. He got nerfed again. Or sorry, not nerfed again. He finally got nerfed this midseason because he was kind of really good at... Uh, beginning of season six when they buff like eight things they nerf the 836 grenade a little bit again and they you can't crit on his ultimate but i think bastion was never going to be a plus or s tier in top 500 anyways because he's actually super easy to dps down because of his giant hitbox he's a little annoying and uh obnoxious in the lower ranks i put bastion on s tier in the metal rank tier list but i think in top 500 even before his gig like all his buffs he was just at this tier and i don't think anything changed he still gains 50 armor on transform which is really good so, like, having Bastion still be really good on that heal kind of makes Winston a lot more unplayable. But if Bastion's not being played, you could totally still play Winston comps. But uh, I think I'm going to keep Bastion here. I'm going to keep Echo here as well. Echo's always solid. Uh, same with Genji. I think Genji, Reaper here still are strong. I actually had people argue that Reaper, like, oh, Karku's on crack, putting Reaper on A tier in Season 6. 
Arguably, yeah, but nothing changed with Reaper, but like Zarya enabling Reaper makes him even better this patch, and I can keep him on A tier. Maybe at most he was B tier if I had to redo the previous season's tier list, but then and then he would get bumped up to A, but I still think Reaper is great right now, based on what's common, which is this. Uh, Reaper can annoy the Doomfist. Uh, I don't know so much about tank busting, like Orisa, which he rotates all our cooldowns, but he can certainly be very, very good with the, with the, with a bubble like this. So I'm going to keep him here. Symmetra. I think she's still a little nichey. Not like she's strong where she's really strong, but then on maps where she's not, she's like fine. It's good. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to knock her down just a little bit. Maybe we'll put her at B plus, which is actually good. B is fine. B plus. This is a B plus. Yeah, B plus is good. We'll, we'll put her, we'll put her there. Brig. Um, there's honestly not much reason to play Brig this patch, at least in top 500. I have actually seen very, very little Brig simply because there's no Winston. Very, few, very little Ana Brig uh, in all of season six, even mid season six. It's been mostly a combination of Ana Kiri, Bap Lucio, Bap Alari, Alari Ana, uh, Kiri. I've actually seen more Life Weaver than Brig in top 500, which is actually kind of crazy to think about. But I don't think Brig is weak. But she's definitely not. She doesn't brawl. She's she needs like something to do. And if there's no hero, like if they're playing too long distance, playing Brig is just kind of like really hard to get value with. If they're playing a long range poke with Sig, Alari, Bap, Zen, or sorry, Bap, Alari, Sig, Hanzo, Widow. Like, what do you do as Brig in the back line? Like nothing. So ah, the meta doesn't favor her right now. But it doesn't mean she's weak. She's still a good hero. Sombra, Sim, Sim. Okay, May is supposed to be a little bit higher. I fucked up the alphabetical order, but I'll get to that in a moment. I'm still go. I'm going down tier by tier. S A plus A. Now we have Moira. It'll be alphabetical by the end of it. Hopefully, chat. We're just going down the list. Uh, Moira. Same thing. I think Moira is like a good hero, straight up. I think the only role she kind of plays in the current meta might be with like Moira Lucio with Arissa or Moira Lucio rush down with like any of the rush tanks too, like Ryan Ram. That's still actually really good. It's just there's very few people who will like play Moira as a meta choice versus them being like a Moira one trick. I think Moira is like, she's good. I don't think she's anywhere below this line though. And Zen, same thing. Um, Zen's great on uh, with poke comms with Sig. But like, that's it. I feel like any other comp, it's been really hard to, to force Zen at all. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but like Zen just barely exists in top 500 unless it's like Circuit Royale. And then like, it used to be traditionally Bap Zen as I mentioned it, but people are are, alterna are alternatively doing Bap Kiri or Bap Alari instead of Zen. This is like the Circuit Royale special, but that's it. Okay, I'm gonna, I think I'm happy with him on good. So let's do that. Uh, on to the good section. Let's see here. Ramatra. I still think Ram is like a good hero. I just think Arissa kind of owns Ram. It's hard for Ram to be played when Arissa exists. Same with Reinhardt as well. These two are a bit more tougher to play in this meta. Winston, because Zarya is a bit more popular, I think Winston is like actually like fine against that comp. A little harder to play around Arissa. You have to ignore her and jump the back line, but yeah. I forgot Alari. No, I moved down Alari from earlier, so I'm ignoring Alari. I think Ram is still... Like, I think he's fine. Should I do good or fine? I think Ram has more of a role than Reinhardt. I'm going to knock Ryan down one. And we'll keep these these three here. We'll keep these three at B+, because I think like really good Winstons are still going to pop off. I think Winston still played in Asia, despite this meta being the NA ladder. This is a top 500 NA observation, but I'm just going to give a shout out to like the, uh, you know, if you run the right comp in this ELO with Winston, you can still dominate. But like too many Exodia pieces might need to come together. Junkrat. Did Junkrat get buffed this midseason patch? I don't think so. I still see only Junkrat one tricks play Junk, rather than him being like super good. And it also just feeds energy to Zarya if she's being played all the time. I think I'm gonna knock Junk down one tier. He's just like a Junk one trick special. That's it. My observation. People are not changing. It's never like, can we get a Junk? You know? I've definitely heard people say, can we get a May 
when we're running a brawl comp because may complements like certain synergies pretty well so is this meta favorable for this honestly may got the buff this this patch right it's a slow last a little bit longer she does a little bit more dps with the the slow beam they gave her like three buffs i think we can keep her in b plus you can wall off if they play more zarya you can actually wall her off and annoy her. i actually saw like a bunch of maze today i saw like four speaking of uh what i saw today i saw zero pharahs i think pharah maybe goes down a tier in this meta i think echo still a popular archetype i think Farah is mostly for the Farah one tricks rather than uh, rather than being like a can we get a Farah kind of moment. So I'm going to put her down to fine. Sombra, I originally actually want to rank her lower after I saw the nerfs in the beginning of season six, but I still see some Sombras like uh, get putting in work. They nerf the uh, the the uptime rate or the the EMP rate quite a bit. So you lose uh, a lot of tempo in the highest levels because first fight ultimates matter a lot in this elo. If you're the first one to get your, your a meaningful ultimate, whether it's an EMP or a support ultimate, you generally win the fight and you snowball really hard, especially against um, push maps and everything. But EMP is a little buggy right now. Uh, they apparently fixed a bug this midseason where like, actually early in season six, if you had a friendly Sombra, it would turn off friendly Life Weaver. It would EMP friendly Life Weaver pedals. Now, if you play Sombra and the enemy team has a Life Weaver, Apparently your EMP just doesn't work. It happened to me on King's Row like a few days ago. I have a video on it. I, have, I think I have a clip on this. I was like, oh, well that's not good. So right now, because she's bugged, I don't know if we should pass this knowledge down, but like, I think we should simply just disable Sombra, but I guess I, I just said it. If the enemy team is running Sombra, just play Life Weaver and her EMP won't work half the time. That's a pretty big counter. You heard it, I, I just said it. This maybe will give some urgency to, to to Blizz to just disable this hero right now because it's actually pretty bad. If by picking a single hero stops EMP, that's like so bad. That's like half her that's like half her value gone. But a lot of people don't know. But I'll let them know. They should probably just disable her. So I'm gonna put her down here because Life Weaver apparently counters her forever. Encouraging bugs. My bad. You haven't heard this bug. It's not like a hundred percent, but it it happens. And she's getting a rework next season. So yeah. And like, if they don't run Life Weaver, like I think she's fine. She's not below average. I think she's fine. Still really, still B. Bs get degrees, guys. Okay, uh, where were we on this list? I talked about Sim earlier. I talked about May. I've not talked about Widow. I think in top 500, Widow, like even despite all the range nerfs, Widow dominated today. I I just think if you're just a great hit scan player, you can still be good with her. So I'm gonna keep that there. Did I talk about Brig earlier? I did. Did I talk about Life Weaver? No. Do I think Life Weaver is actually good? Yes. I'm going to hold my stance on this. I've seen more Weavers than I have Moiras. I'm going to keep him B plus in top 500. And honestly, this season, I'm going to keep Mercy here too. This mid season, because Ash got buffed. Play it with this all time. The Mercy was playing pretty a lot with uh, the Echo I saw t uh, today as well. Like, still pocketing any of the hit scans still has its value. Especially in ranked play. You probably won't see her too much in pro pro play, but on ladder, I think Mercy... Like, remember how I mentioned the example? Like, nobody goes like, can we switch to a junk? But there are people... There's a lot... There's two There's two baskets of people. People will go like, oh my god, we have a Mercy. Please switch off Mercy. And then we have DPS players who beg for the Mercy. Like, can I get a Mercy? Can I get a Mercy pocket? I don't know. There's no middle ground. But, like, she's really good in certain situations. And then some, some comps just, like, don't have her fitting at all. So, I don't know. I think... She, that means like if we average it out right down the middle. Sure, let's put her here. We talked about Mora, we talked about Zen, the B plus tier, done. The B tier, Cass, I think he's fine. The the DPS fall off uh, range nerf definitely hurt him a lot, but he does have that tanky. He walks in, throws the hinder up in front of your face and he still has that niche, so sure. Also Ryan's a tank, so I wanna put him on the left side. Sure, 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 sure. We talked about this. B tier. Done. Did I talk about Queen? I did talk about Queen earlier. I think I saw a lot of Queens, but Zarya does kind of own her. If they play like Anna Zarya, it's pretty hard to play Queen. You need a Kiriko on your team if you're going to force it. But I actually think Queen performs a lot better than these two right now. But like not enough for me to justify her as being a strong pink in the meta. Because like if these two are like everywhere, it's still pretty hard to like force it 100%. You know what I mean? And Bastion, like if this and this and this... Or this and this, or this or this, with the bubbler in the game, and you're trying to like hold space as queen. Like you need the Lucy, you need it all in with your team. But yeah, I'm gonna keep queen there. Let me just skip on ahead. Uh, do I move ball? No, I still think he's below average. I had a ball on my team earlier today. It kind of just felt like just a lot of rolling around, a lot of downtime, just waiting for something to happen. We just got pelted in the back line. I did not enjoy my time playing against ball. Uh, ball on my team today. 
But I played against the hog today and I actually lost, believe it or not. It was actually my team had the ball, their team had the hog, and our team with the ball lost. Because the hog, even though hog is just painful to play, the hog had him and I remember it was a uh, it was on Havana. There was the hog one trick, but they had Brig. Hog Brig, and then my ball was forcing ball into that. And like he wasn't dying, but he would just like not be able to like pile drive. He'd do some damage and roll away. And then I'm just stuck in the back, just dying on cooldown because just, their widow doesn't get contested. Blah, 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 blah. Hog plays pretty well into ball specifically, but if you force Hog against what, Zarya or Rissa, yeah, good luck. But I still think he's pretty painful to play, so I'm gonna leave that there. So, I think this is my adjusted mid season six tier list. Not for metal ranks. This is what I've been seeing in top 500. I think this is okay. So definitely these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heroes are the most uncommon. Arguably, Cass is more common than the rest of these, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just like biased with what Wanted says. Wanted thinks Cass is ass cheeks right now because the damage range nerf kind of sucks. He just doesn't output enough in a lot of cases. But yeah, I think if you play, honestly, if, even if you play any of the B and above, it's probably fine. Or realistically, you can play ball or hog and it's like, whatever, man. There's more things to be worried about than like how a hero ranks on one streamer's tier list, more so than capitalizing on enemies' mistakes. Think about it that way. That's my, just. this is just my opinion. Form your own opinions. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, bye.